Erdington, Birmingham, where children like Sasha and Katie spend about 20% of their time at the local primary school. So how do parents support literacy for the other 80% of children's lives and harness all the benefits of their cultural diversity? The role for parents and carers in their children's literacy is crucial. Um, they are their child's first educators and are their enduring educators. Because parents are with children so much of the time um, and talk is so important, then to talk to children, tell it, talking about the story of their everyday lives is important. We've worked significantly this year um, to gain parental involvement and to break down those barriers between home and school. The nursery parents have always been involved anyway, always done the stay and play mornings and reception have then picked that up this year and they've also had stay and play. So very informal, very non-threatening, um, just a way for the parents to come in and sit and talk. Grab a seat, make yourself comfortable around the outside of the carpet. It's lovely to see you. I'd like to welcome all of you this morning to our stay and play day. Hold your magic carpet, close your eyes, and we're going to go off to the seaside. Mm. What can you see? I can, I can see... You can see the birds, I can see the seagulls. I can see the whale. You can see the whale? Oh, I can, I can too, with the water coming up. I can smell some donuts. Donuts! Let me smell. All see if we can smell the donuts. Mums and dads, can you smell those donuts? <laughs> Reading with children encourages confidence and a love of books. It's at the heart of the foundation stage curriculum and can be successfully delivered at school or at home. The teddy bear's picnic. I'm always reading to her before she goes to bed. When she reads a book, she looks at the pictures. She's very interested, very keen. What goes in the book, she wants to know all about it. We talk about everything together, share things together. I do think encouraging parents to come into the school, it does help a lot. Kipper Doria. First time I went to Amina's stay and play, I thought to myself, should I really go? Then I thought to myself, yeah, I should go. And when I did actually see it, I thought it convinced me more that they are doing good. It is helping her. When Amina was two years old, I started introducing like A, B, C to her, putting them on the, my bedroom walls. So she gets a good hang of it, so it helps her when she goes to nursery. I think it's very important for children to learn all like speaking, writing, reading. It's going to help them in the future. If they have an early start, they're going to get very far then. I think it's very important. What's happening in the picture, Mina? He went in the water. He went in the water. These parents from Bangladesh are just as keen to help with their daughter's literacy. Bengali is our maternal language. We teach them, you know, homework. They go from school, you know, little word. My husband helps her as well. If the rabbit's running home. If the write and read is good, they're going to qualify, they're going to learn something more. In school, they, they can go anywhere, their self. Eat. the cow. The school aims to build on parents' skills and enthusiasms like these because we know that children make excellent progress with support from home. Once the parents are in, schools want to make the most of the opportunity. <laughs> this is the, the writing, and this is the picture. What's it a picture of? A lion. A lion. Once upon a time, there was a great big lion. <laughs> and a tiny little mouse. 
the lion, he caught the little mouse in his paw, just like that. Pretend your hands are paw. He caught the little mouse in it. The little mouse said, please don't hurt me. One day I might be able to... Sessions like these and information leaflets reinforce the advantages of regular reading times. Is panda in the toy box? Yes. We go to the library, don't we? We got lots of books. In my past, it was uh, you'd, you'd remember words as opposed to pronounce them. You have a set of words, so you look at them and you remember them, and that's how. You, I was told. I mean, Katie's spelling's really good because she's worked, she works the sounds out and she can virtually read anything. I'm going to give you the letter sounds and you blend them together to see what word I'm doing and then you do that word. K. L. Ha. Yeah. Well done! I've got to make them a bit harder. Only four of the when they're playing, they learn a great deal more. They pick up things a lot more than they do with just somebody just talking at them. And uh, when we come in here, especially on play and stairs, that's when you really realise just how much play and how much they pick up. And it's just really, really surprising. It's uh, insightful, I'd say, when you come in. And next time these children come home saying they've been outside shaking pom-poms, parents will know why. Exercising shoulder muscles soon to be ready for writing. So let's think about this sentence. Let's say it together. My head will go in the water. So how are we going to start with my? What sound is that going to begin with? Ma. Ma. So right. My. Does it need anything else? Ma. No. My. Ma. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well done. Ma and yeah. Can you say Ted and do finger phoneme so that you can spell it? Off you go then. Ted. Fantastic. Leave a finger space and then write Ted. This is how you can help at home with her. They're quite used to the finger phonics and getting them to think about the sound. The first time I went in was um, in nursery. They did it in nursery. And they didn't, they didn't do really writing or anything, it was just playing. And then when we come in here, we could see that how could she could write and read these words. It was amazing, it really was. It was such a big step forward. Yeah, it's just a, a good setup all around. Um, seems to be learning new things all the time. Yeah, she'll come home and she'll tell us about all sorts of stuff. They take it in turns on the tables and they do learn. I mean, they sit in the circle and they learn their words and they learn how to be patient and wait their turn and things like that, which is, I think, is really good. But having fun's important as well. Yeah. You've got to have fun to learn, don't you? We're starting to see the trickle of parents now come in, so much so the parents are saying to us, well, is this going to happen in year one? Are we going to continue that in year one? And we're saying yes, definitely. One of the big successes this year has been the involvement of parents on a school trip, on the reception school trip. Lots of speaking and listening opportunities here, helped along by using today's technology. Okay. What did Grandma say? Watching them go in the water. You're cute, I'm a map reader. Look at him, Mummy. 
I think that there are a range of effective ways to include parents and carers in ongoing literacy and how they can support their child with it. I think that parents come with a range of different views and interests in terms of uh, literacy with their children. The workshops that you may do when, when parents and carers are showing an interest. To be supporting parents effectively, you need to be tapping into all of that. We try to use water to bring to it, to mix it all. Around. you got to have your ears out for the keyboard. Yeah, yeah. We fill in for them, don't we? Yeah. And I, I don't know if that's the best way for the child to develop his, his, uh, his, 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 his speaking skills, you know? I'm going to talk briefly about the writing experience in nursery and reception and show you some of the resources we use and examples of children's work. For example, this is in reception, a writing, a shopping list, and quite clearly, this child has got the idea that lists go from top to bottom. This is the early stages of becoming writers. And they're clearly making some letters that they know. It may well be letters that they're familiar with in their name, and circles. This is wonderful. This child's clearly been learning about postcards and knows that we write and that there's a picture on one side as well. And this is another piece of work that he's done. This is um, an information text. After being to, the, being to the zoo, he's written the elephant. This elephant is actually lying down and he's said he is big and we've got a huh here and a very clear but We find that the boys, particularly in nursery and reception, like to write outside. So just don't think about having your writing things in the house. And the writing in large size. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Again, big mo gross so, motor movements. Let them write on the wall, let them write on the floor. And you yourselves can follow what we do at school at home. When you're writing your shopping list, do it visibly so the children can see. Let them sit alongside you and write their own shopping list. When you're in the supermarket, refer to your list to show them that it has meaning. It wasn't just a fun day out, it was an educational visit. So they could pick up strategies to support the children as well. We still have a lot of work to do um, in parental involvement, but our approach has been to target the early years parents because if we can get them on board in the early years, then that support will continue. This is Horton doing a great job because he's, he starts reading now. He's improving his reading, he's writing, he's speaking. So she, does, she put a lot of work. She has opened up a lot. Her confidence has grown. And I'm very pleased with her progress. She goes, Mom, can you bring the books from the nursery and read it like the Mrs. Pete does? And I take the books from the nursery and she reads it at the bedtime. I think the way they plan their day out is very good, even though they are playing, but they are learning something at the end of the day. They are still writing, reading, they're learning everything. Every minute, I think they're learning something. Mm.